So this is what we need to put in a back pressure sensor on a DIY turbo system. Um, there's a lot of different types uh, that vary in price and quality and what materials they use, but this is essentially all you need to set up a basic back pressure sensor. Um, let's just start here. We have a 100 PSI linear pressure transducer, 5 volt. You can get these on Amazon or eBay. I think I got mine for eBay from eBay about 20 bucks. Um, it's 8th inch male national pipe thread. Um, 0.5 volts is 0 PSI and 0.45 volts is 100 PSI linear. Um, so you can just put those in for your sensor. And this is a quarter inch compression by eighth inch male pipe thread. And this one is the female pipe thread eighth inch by quarter inch compression. So one of these goes on this end with the pressure transducer and the other one goes in the turbo manifold. Uh, this is quarter inch copper tubing. You can get this, I got this at Lowe's. Um, yeah, just a stick of that five or six bucks. This guy was 20 bucks. These fittings were maybe four or five dollars each or less, and then just throw some Teflon tape on each of them. If you were running like something really high performance that was going to be in a racing environment, you could definitely use stainless steel fittings. Uh, since I'm only going to put this on the car, make a few poles and uh, check the back pressure just to see how my turbo is sized. Uh, for this motor, which I actually think it's quite small, it, it hits boost at like 2100 RPMs and um, that's why I'm curious. You could definitely use all of this stuff in stainless and uh, you could leave it on there for a long time. But my purpose is I'm only going to put this on for, you know, uh, a few good poles, uh, maybe just enough to get some good data logs. As soon as I have the data I want, um, I'll just remove it. And in the same spot that I drill this on, we're actually going to be putting a K-type thermocouple and doing uh, exhaust temperature as well. So let's move over here to the car. My trusty old M30 on the E28. It's a little bit tight in here, but in here there is actually some pretty good access to the turbo manifold. Right there is where it bolts together. Right where you see my finger, there's a nice little spot where it all merges, and I'm just going to drill and tap right there, and I'll come out under and mount the pressure sensor either, either on the side of the engine bay or just kind of vertically here with a P-clip um, on the fender. So, yeah, uh, if I find a better spot, we'll go with that, but for now, it really just seems like right before the turbo, and... Um, Right here, I can move these hoses around, get a drill in there, drill it out. It'll be a lot more uh, pain, painless to get in there and do that. So we'll get on to that. That'll be the next part of the video. Okay, so the first step is just tighten this guy on here, uh, like five wraps of the thin style um, Teflon tape is good. Just crank these down until they basically want to stop moving. I don't, it's really hard to explain. Tapered threads are weird and uh, brass sometimes will split if you're really abusive on it. So just go until it's like good and tight. Um, down in here it has a little stop where the copper will hit against. I think you can see it in there. So basically you just have um, what they call a ferrule and the ferrule is what goes over the copper pipe and seats against this nut and pushes against this tapered surface and what it does is it bends the copper and this brass together and they form basically like a bead so it pushes the the brass into the copper and they tighten up and they make a seal um, so we're gonna do that next um, so basically what happens is if I can do this one-handed it's a little tricky this guy goes on this can this one goes next. Um, as long as there's no burrs, this should go on pretty good. Yep, just like that. And you'll notice this guy, you just want to bottom out in the fitting. So make sure these are tight. So push the copper all the way into the compression fitting. 
bring it up like this and like that, bring it all the way tight. And as you're tightening it, you don't want this to like accidentally pop out because then it won't be in the right position. So just make sure this kind of stays in. It would be helpful if you had a vise. Um, I do have a vise, but I lent it out to a mate. And so I'm just gonna do this with wrenches here. Got a 13 millimeter and a nice uh, well machined crescent wrench that I'll put on here and tighten them down. These don't need much. Um, it's really hard to explain. I would say probably less than two turns, turn and a half, you'll start to have a really good seat on that. If you go too far, it can actually collapse this pipe and compromise the fitting. So uh, you'll just have to try it to get a feel for it, but I'd start with like a turn and a half and then see if it doesn't pull out and you should be good. All right, the next thing you'll need is a tap. So this one is eighth inch by 27 and I have a 516th drill bit. You're not actually supposed to use this for it, but I don't have any other size, so I have to make it work. It's a little bit undersized. The inch equivalent is 0.338, and this guy is just a little bit shy of that. It's a little bit loose in there, but it'll usually work. I also have this Christmas tree bit um, that has the same thing. I think it's supposed to be 27 64ths. You can just look up a tap and die uh, drill bit combo, um, but the the one it's supposed to be in inches is 0.338. So I just grab this, lock it out, go to my bits and just find whatever fits as close as possible when I don't have a lot of other good bits. All right, here we go. So you can see, started drilling the hole, moved the oil feed out of the way and the boost controller over to the side. And we're just gonna go right there where it merges. So we'll see how we do. All right, we got it drilled and tapped. It was a little more of a pain than I wanted to. Um, I couldn't get anything down in there on this with a wrench to uh, tap it. So I actually found out that a quarter drive backwards fits it. And then I just put a wrench on the end up here. I was able to get it you know, up here and twist it in. If you never tapped and drilled something uh, for threads, it can be tedious and kind of a pain. So. Um, we tapped it about halfway up and this guy goes in um, about a third so far so we're about good and uh, now we're just gonna sink this guy in I already put the compression nut on this other end uh, it wasn't as good as this one but uh, it'll just work fine so I'm gonna go for it next okay so I've got it uh, mounted up in here so what I decided is I've got a nice little clip right here so I'm going to take a P-clip, put it over the sensor, and mount it right here. So basically what I want to do is have this come over, but it's much too long. But we don't want to lose the volume inside here um, to dampen the pulses for the sensor. So we're going to take this and wind it around a can um, a few times, give it some coils, and then it will just sit right here. All right, so I think it turned out okay. There we go, comes up here, just winds a little bit and sits in a P-clip on the front of the car. So now just need to run a few wires up into the cabin and she'll be good to go. All right, so this kind of was my prediction. This turbo is very small, makes boost very early in the power band. Um, let me actually, let's grab RPM real quick. Uh, let's see if we can just search RPM. So yeah, look at this. We're already making positive boost pressure at like uh, 2,800, 20 or some odd. I know it actually, if you load it differently, it'll actually make it lower down. It's like 2,300 RPMs. But anyway, back pressure is all the way up to 30 some odd PSI, 31.5 when boost is at 15. So we're already uh, two to one on the back pressure. This is exactly why I don't want to turn up this turbo anymore. And if I want to make more power, it'd be wise to just switch it up. Uh, one thing that we noticed here is the back pressure is really jumpy. Um, 
This, uh, from what I've heard, can just be that there's not enough volume in that tube. Like you can put a little chamber to fix the pulses. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that'd be another thing we could try. But yeah, that basically solved my mystery right there. So hope you guys enjoyed this. It's been a learning experience for me. I kind of assumed such with uh, how responsive this turbo is. It just seemed to uh, be the, it would probably have a ton of back pressure. And I don't want to push it much further because back pressure is not good. It's making the motor get hot and potentially detonate a little more and uh, not really make it efficient. It's having a hard time flowing all that air. So there we go. Enjoy. All right, just want to sum it up. Um, went out and took this thing for a ride. Just set it here with the gentle P-clip. I roughly put in the wiring because it's coming out. Um, it Literally all I needed to do is make a few good runs with it and then I'm gonna unplug it, take it out, and then we're putting a thermocouple in and we're gonna check the uh, exhaust gas temperature next. So, sorry about the horrible wiring and everything because uh, it's disappearing here um, as soon as I swap out for the next sensor. But I hope someone was able to benefit from this. It's super simple. Um, maybe $30, $40 in parts at most. And uh, there's not, unless you're racing, I don't see a point in keeping this on because you you know kind of know what you're doing really for me it was just to see how the back pressure looks and uh you know how small this turbo is for this motor um you know it's two to one back pressure i mean for the street it's awesome it's fine but um i don't want to turn it up anymore unless i go with something with a bigger turbine that flows a little bit more out there but right now i mean this is a great combination uh, it probably makes 350 wheel horsepower on 15 some odd PSI, and it's great. It comes in low, it makes tons of torque, it cruises really well, it does burnouts awesome. Uh, it's just a sloppy mechanics turbo BMW, and um, I was just curious of how this is. But you can apply this to basically anything, um, anything with a turbo. So, hope... Y'all enjoyed this. It was uh, fun messing around. I'll include some more information on it in the video and uh, get you on the next one when we do a thermocouple.